Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jet the Martian, and welcome to Skinwalker. This is an indie horror game that I found on Game Jolt, and it's pretty highly rated, and it's based on an actual urban legend. So this looks like it's going to be pretty good. It's from what I heard. There's like multiple endings and stuff like that, and it sounds really amazing. So let's just begin. It seems we've got some narrative here. Joe, the following story really happened. I saw it with my own eyes. Maybe it didn't happen as I saw it, but more on that later. We were all going out camping, me and three friends from university. Let me introduce my friends. This is Darren. I wouldn't say that he is our group of friends leader. Or actually, I would. He's the one that always gets us all allowed to the house and into action. He's the first one to hit on that cute girl by the bar. He's the first one to jump from the roof into the swimming pool. According to himself, he is even... According to himself, he was even more impulsive when he was a kid. I can only imagine his childhood, and how often he must have broken his legs, scraped his knees, and hit his head. Still, if it weren't for Darren, we wouldn't have... We wouldn't have half the amount of fun we have. This girl is Celeste. Celesti? Celesti? Celesti, I'm just gonna say Celesti. We have known each other since we were children. We met each other when she moved into the house next door when I was seven. My mom told me to go show her around the neighborhood. After that, we were inseparable for a few years. She's a nice girl, although her health isn't the best. She has some kind of heart problem, which I forgot the name of. This forced her to be away from school during extended periods of time during her childhood. Because of this, until we started university, I was her only friend. Still, she never complained, and I've always seen her as a positive, happy girl. Great, and now we've got Ron Weasley over here. Next is me. Oh, he, I'm Ron Weasley. I am Ron Weasley. I think Joe's the main character and the person we're going to be playing as. Next is me. I'm Joe. As the name implies, I'm pretty normal. I don't have any overwhelming bad qualities, but on the other hand, I don't have any overwhelmingly good ones. I live in this apartment a short walk from my university. This is where us four friends usually gather before going out. This guy here, looking all relaxed on my bed, is Michael. He's my neighbor, living in the apartment next door. One day, while I had Celeste over, he just barged in. Hey man, your place looks pretty nice. Why have I joined you for dinner? He said. As you can imagine, he's pretty pushy. I don't think he realizes it himself. It came over several times after that day. After that, we somehow naturally became friends. Huh. Interesting characters. Oh, that sound though. So, one day Darren came with the idea that we should go camping. Darren said his family had a cabin a little bit into the forest. So camping we went. It could be fun, right? Of course, me, Michael, and Celeste disliked the idea of staying in a cabin. It's a camping trip. We have to sleep in the wilderness. So Darren told us about the woods near the cabin. These are, those are obvious faces in the wood. Come on, man. On all the trees. You have a jade. I don't remember which, I don't remember much about the trip to the cabin. We joked around and took a few breaks, normal stuff. Either way, we drove up to the cabin and left the car there. We took a short break in the cabin and set out into the wilderness. That wilderness effect, though. So ambient. We went pretty far in. I can't say how far in distance exactly but it took several hours to get to where we set up camp. The first day we just screwed around. Nothing abnormal happened. Did we get to screw around and see how nothing abnormal is happening? But then... What? Oh. Hey! You are right there, Michael? Morning there! Or should I say good afternoon? Fix us some wood for a fire, will you? Michael! I can't be bothered doing that. I set out to gather wood for. I don't know what that was. I set out to gather wood for a new fire and water to cook with. Excellent. So Zed's the action key, and shift will make me move faster. So where am I headed? Where's the water at? Oh. What is that sound? It doesn't sound like something you'd hear in a forest.
What the duck? There we go, a bucket of water. Alright, so Z Z is the action key. Alright. We're freaking out of here, man. Screw that. The sound stopped. How mysterious. Well, screw that. Let's head up and light our fire. I should have enough wood to make the fire last a while tonight. Great. There's enough wood for a fire. There's enough wood for a fire, Zed. There's enough wood for a fire. Okay, then great. Pour water into cooking pot. Excellent. Hold on. Darren, what the hell are you doing just sleeping about like a douche? What's the matter with you? Alright, sup Celeste. Celeste the molesty. What? I'm sorry. Alright, let's cook something up, shall we? Oh, you ask her because she's the woman? Yes, shush, shush. Later that evening, ship began to go down. Oh, God. That fog, that red color overlay. Yep, screw you guys. I'm out of here. And uh, maybe I should talk to them. God damn, we've been drinking a lot. Look at that by the tent. Jeezy peeps. Well, it's time to go to sleep soon. We're all out of booze. Yeah, I can tell. God damn. Guess we have to go back to town tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to that four hour trek. Maybe we shouldn't have gone so deep in. Ha 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 ha. That's a good one, Michael. You can see why we became natural friends. What the hell is up with this fog? Every time I've been here before, there haven't been any. There haven't ever been any fog. That is not grammatically correct. Every time I've been here before, there haven't been any fog. That sound. The sound intermittency, if you're hearing it, is not me messing up. It's actually the sound in the game. I don't know what's going on. It's really chilly outside for being in the middle of summer. Yeah. Hey, anyone else hear that sound? Yeah, I know you mention it. What is that? Sounds like something metally. Excellent deduction, Michael! Metally. Ah, uh, is that even a word? Are you stupid? Shut up, asshole. It's a word if I say so. Damn right, Michael. I'm on Michael's side. I don't like Darren. I just don't like him. It stopped. Maybe it was some kind of machine. I'm a machine. Not oh, subtly angling the camera. Who the hell would go out hours from the nearest civilization in the middle of the night? I don't know. What group of morons would dare do that? And start revving up some kind of weird machine. I don't know. Lumberjacks. Who gives a shit? It's probably someone using a chainsaw or something. Boom! Lumberjacks. Let's go to sleep. I'm tired. Okay. Why, hello, Celeste. I'm sure there was no chainsaw. I wonder what it was. Mysterious. Ah, well, I guess we'll never know. Shame. Sleeping as soon overtook everyone. Oh, my. Something woke you up. Alright, so that's in second person. But something woke you up a few hours later in your half week state. So now it's second. Okay, then. You stumbled outside the tent. What's that random change of narrative? It's a bit weird. So I'm no longer first person Joe. I am now second person omnipotent being. Okay, it seems legit. Darren, Michael, Celeste. Is that you? Well, I guess. They'd be inside the tent. You could check if they're in the tent. It is a small tent. In scale. The mist is even thicker than before. I can't see much. I don't even know if they're fitting into that. I mean, look at the size of the character compared to the size of the tent. I'm getting all game theory up in here. Okay. I'm hearing that noise. I'm not sure I approve. What's up with this? A tree. It got knocked down. But how? Michael? Is that you? Oh god. Say something, will you? Who are you? Oh. Oh, what are you, mate? Whoa, stop right there. I have a knife. Go away, Wolfman. Shit. Whoa, okay. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm out. I gotta go back and tell Celeste about this. God damn it, she'll think I'm so manly how I ran away at the speed of sound. Oh god, screw that. I'm gonna sleep again. Hey! Oh my god, there's something outside that tent! 
<sighs> what? Uh, I'm sure there is lots of squirrels and shit. Go back to sleep. Hey, is Michael here? Mm, yeah, I'm here. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know, the thing outside looked like you. That's racist. <laughs> it was probably some an some anime in my mouth. I don't think we have to worry about a fox or whatever. Take it easy and go back to sleep. Well, alrighty then. Maybe it was just some animal. But those sounds, though. So dramatic. A few minutes later. Okay, job put whoever that is. I want to sleep already. It wasn't me. Me neither. That doesn't sound like any of our voices. Well, she. <laughs> now I'm never gonna be able to sleep. Should we go outside and look? What if it's some crazy psycho with an axe? Good point, Michael. All the more reason to check it out. Shut up, Darren. It's not like the tent is some kind of impenetrable fortress, right? Just like your mother. Seriously, if that was one of you guys, tell me right now. This ain't funny anymore. Triple dot. Okay, everyone get out together and check it out. I ain't going alone. I would never leave you behind, Michael. Love you. I mean, what? Has bros? Has bros? Has bros? What the heck is that? I don't know, Michael. Someone was definitely here. Shit! Shit, 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 shit. Calm down. Celeste. We are four against one here. It'll be fine. What if the dude got some kind of weapon with him? I mean, he killed this little critter, didn't he? Oh, he is a critter. God damn right, Michael. Yeah, God damn right. And that sound is really starting to bug me, so I'm going to adjust my volume real quick. Michael's right. We've got to get the hell out of here. You're right, Celeste. Michael is right. We can't just up and leave. It's the middle of the night. What about our stuff? Screw the stuff, Michael! I mean, Darren! Screw our stuff. Exactly, Celeste. God damn it, I'm on her side, too. I'm not staying here. Angle the camera even better. I'm not staying here another minute. Fine, we'll leave. But at least bring the flashlight and some food and water. I think you're overreacting, though. We haven't even seen anyone. Still, someone or something left this dead creature here. This is a good point, Michael. Yes, it did. We can't exactly go back to sleep without no worries. Without worries. Goddamn, double naked. I guess you're right. I'll go get the flashlight. Everyone bring some stuff you think we might need. A bit worse than that, Darren! A couple of minutes later. Alright, let's go. Oh, what? They all got... Ew, the, eh, where are they? <laughs> I don't want to imagine. That's a day critter. God damn. Well, I guess... I might as well just be alone right now. Jesus, hell. That's where I saw it last time. Let's go to the only exit I know of. It's so dark. At least it's still summer. It's not pitch black. The fog is really annoying, though. I agree with you there, Dan, actually. So we're going back to the cabin, right? I guess that's the plan. That's a good plan, Michael. Oh, what the deuce. What the... Get out of here. I'm not interested in you or your tomfoolery, pal. I'm just no. I'm simply no. Oh, how is no one hearing this? Whenever we get near it, it starts going... Whoa, whoa. A while later, it became obvious Darren had no idea where we were going. God damn it, Darren. He was swearing, looking all around. Fuck, 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 fuck. We've been walking for awfully long now. Are you sure we are on the right path, Darren? I've walked this path hundreds of times. We are on the right path. I don't recognize anything from when we were walking to the camp, though. I said we were on the right path. God damn it. But as time went on, it became obvious that Darren had no idea where we were. Darren couldn't find the path. Maybe it's the fog. Maybe the darkness. Maybe something else. Who knows? Either way, we were lost. I kept looking behind me. I was having that feeling where you think someone is watching or stalking you. And he tripped over Celeste when she fell. How Celeste up? Sure. I took Celeste's hand and dragged her to her feet. It was getting even mistier. If not for the flashlight... I wouldn't have any idea who she was. I recognize that tree. We're getting to the cabin. Again, I had the feeling that something was watching me. 
My gut was screaming at me that something, somewhere was wrong. That would be the curry, mate. That will just be the curry. I realized the sound from earlier was back. Softer. But still present. I started looking around, panicking. Did a head count. Or more accurately, silhouette count. Me, Celeste, still holding my hand. Darren in the lead, Michael to the left. Who the heck was that guy besides Michael? My grip on Celeste's hand tightened, and I quickened my pace. I thought about shouting out, but was worried. If I did, maybe the thing would turn around and jump Michael or something. I don't know what to do. I ran my fingers along a knife I brought from camp. Then the cabin appeared out of nowhere. The mist was starting to disintegrate around us. It was easier to make out who everyone was now. I looked at the thing next to Michael. She looked just like Celeste. The thing whose hand I was holding leaned in front of me. It wasn't Celeste. Oh God, Jesus Christ, you're right, that was not Celeste. Jeez. I would have ran or screamed, but my body was clenching up for no reason. The thing turned and walked into the mist. God damn it. I'm pretty sure Celeste did not look like that before. I caught up with the others as they entered the cabin, practically in tears. They couldn't find the car and were arguing about where we put it. I told them what I saw. Obviously, they didn't believe me. Still, everyone hurried inside and locked the door. 